I meet Mr. Straker and his merry man once sang a song about me. Gary Sobers, when you call his name, he's the greatest cricketer the world has ever seen. Who would have ever thought that the slender tall lad from a depressed village, Walcott Avenue, Bayland, now known as Bayville, would become a local hero and international icon. It all started with encouragement from Garnet Ashby to play cricket for Kent. George, Gerald, Cecil and I went to Bay Street Boys School and Greta and Elise were pupils at the St. Matthias Girls School. Our family attended service at St. Paul's Anglican Church. Although things were tough for us after my dad, who was a merchant seaman who perished in a torpedo attack by a German submarine on the Lady Drake during the Second World War, Mom slaved unselfishly to ensure we were properly clothed, fed and in regular attendance at church and school. At the time of his death, I was only five years old, but never lacked for guidance and encouragement in those early years, since there were a number of father figures in my life. Some I recall like Garnet Ashby, Everton Barrow, Melvin Brewster, Goldburn Cumberbatch, Lionel Daniel, and GCAB Williams, the father of six cricketing sons, including Boogles. I would like to single out Mr. Daniel, who was a cabinet maker on Culloden Road. All the boys in the district congregated by his shop and he taught us the value of money and the importance of honesty. He also would have been responsible for Jerry and I becoming accomplished cabinet makers. That was not all we were good at. We were also excellent athletes. My big brother George was a promising footballer, but had to abandon school at Common Mayor and sports to help in supporting the family. He followed in father's footsteps and became a seaman. Before 10 years old, I was one of the stars in cricket at my school. I remember in 1946, in a match with St. Matthias, we bowled them out very cheap in both innings and then Jerry and I, in an unbeaten first wicket partnership of over 100, won the match. We might have been the best elementary school cricketers in all Barbados, and we were known as the Chinese Twins. Jerry was a right-handed wicketkeeper batsman. He was invited on many occasions to BCA trials in the early 50s and even played semi-professional in England. Cecil was a superb close to the wicket fieldsman who played for Spartan. I also played football and basketball. On the soccer field I was a goalkeeper and left winger. Actually I was the only sportsman to represent Barbados in three separate disciplines and later in life could pose as a lead golfer here as well. By age 13, I was playing BCL cricket with the big boys. Because of Dennis Atkinson and bowling my left hand spin with Wanderers only in the nets, Inspector Wilfred Farmer, who was a former Wanderers player then, captain of the police gave me a pick with them. Only 16, I was called to trials for the 1952 to 1953 Indian tour and made 12th man. Thanks to Frank King, a West Indies fast bowler, needing rest, I got my first shot to play for Barbados. In 1954, I made my international debut in the fifth and final test against England in Jamaica. For the next 20 years, I would have an unforgettable time in centre and off the field, making some records like 365 not out that would take some 36 years to be broken by another West Indian lefty, Brian Lara. In 1966 at Lords, along with my cousin David Holford, handled the English attack to establish the six wicket record of 274 and six sixes in a single six ball over off Malcolm Nash. Still not yet. The hitting of six sixes from one over. The bowler was Malcolm Nash of Glamorgan. Nash has got to pick that up at the right distance. He's hit that. Thirty minutes, so a faster century than his already fastest is on. That's another one. Fifty-two in twenty-nine minutes. That's another one up in the enclosure. What an incredible bit of hitting! Oh, he's got that shorter one. It's up again. There it is. 
sixes. Wonder where Nash is going to bowl this one. Oh, that will just carry. Now he's going to be out. Go down. Oh, Johnson is over the boundary. Now, oh, what? Uh, where's my glasses? Somebody pinch my glasses. Let's have a look. Roger Davis. He's not allowed to go over that boundary line with the ball in his hands. He has to stay this side of it. And they're clarifying the position. The crowd are sticking their hands up for a six. They want Sobers to remain. This is the most chaotic situation for a, a cricket field. Conference now between the umpires. This is uh, really one of the bits of drama that we're worth looking at again sometime. And if there's any doubt, so was remains in my view. Now the players are joining in. Six it is! And he's done it! There are many more things to talk about in cricketing statistics, but even after my retirement in 1974, one year before the inaugural World Series, because of knee trouble, records in history were still being made when Queen Elizabeth II knighted me in open air on the garrison savannah instead of Buckingham Palace. I also had my picture placed on an independence issue of a Barbados stamp and later the placing of my name on the player pavilion at Kensington Oval. When one speaks of the best batsman, I am sure to be shortlisted among them. The same happens for the best bowler. But as for the best all-rounder or the greatest cricketer the world has seen, it is my belief it would top the list. For these achievements, Barbados has been very gracious to me naming the indoor sports gymnasium and a roundabout after me. They also erected a statue of me and it now rests at Kensington Oval, having been moved from the roundabout. I have been included in the legends of Barbados and I am the last remaining alive of the first 10 heroes of Barbados. I am honoured to have served not only my country, but also the world placing Barbados in the annals of world sporting history. My two sons, Daniel and Matthew, and daughter Genevieve, whom my wife Prudence gave me, are my pride and joy, knowing that I would have influenced many a boy from all strata of society to fulfill their dream is my highest honor.